This is the Blackout Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Blackout Podcast where I get to talk to amazing people that do amazing things. And today I have Kristen and Michael and an amazing couple. Kristen does these great paintings and Michael plays music. And I know you're working on this project from uh, Murky Hair Hats. From the bottoms of our Murky Hair From hearts. the bottoms yeah. of our Murky Hair yeah. Got it, got yeah. it, got it. And where you create a, a song and then she creates a painting based on the song. Yeah, yeah, that's what we have in the works. Uh, we started, the first release was in May, and every month we're doing, we're kind of dedicating a month to the particular song and painting. So the first month in May, we released John Coffey, the song, and then we put out all the stuff to, to follow it. So Kristen's painting came out a few days afterwards, put a music video out, uh, various other promotional items. Kristen did some uh, John Coffey notebooks. Mm-hmm. What else did, we, did you do? Yeah, I think that, oh yeah, I had a yoga mat for John yoga Coffey. Mat, so yeah. it was, everything's printed with that painting that we make for the month. And we're mm. going to try different stuff and see what people are into. And the, video, into. and the video for John Coffey is great. I think like the thing people don't understand about stop motion video is the work that gets into it. Like you do all this work for all that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And what, what was the idea behind the video? I watched it a couple of times and I'm like, oh man, that's so <laughs> great. The lighting was absolutely amazing. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, well that's that... crazy to hear, actually. Everything is really DIY. <laughs> so, you know, it's covering lights over things and angling and taking a million shots to get something that's legible and clear. So thanks for that, uh, <laughs> we, especially. We don't really know what we're doing in terms of filming anything. So we just kind of frame some type of shot and just look at it and like is this good or could it be better and (laughs) if if, if it could be better we try to think well what can we do to make it better we don't really have like oh this light should be at this angle and this should be focused in in this way like we don't know what we're doing just kind of gauge it based on how we perceive it to look and hopefully it comes out good in the it end it looks great so. it looks great well, and thank you the thing about lighting tiny little people is is, is even more work than lighting big people because yeah kind of have to come down to their level and yeah and then since it's stop motion you're yeah, moving the see was a barbie yeah, and a barbie and a person it looks like the robaxis it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so one of those guys you buy that in uh you know drawing school or maybe even massage therapy school where you're learning anatomy yeah. he's got sort of bulk michelin man muscles yeah and, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that was mike in the in the video oh and, and you had a oh yeah of course yeah that's us <laughs> i mean it didn't even like you know we I had just... a discussion about i don't think barbie should have this pink dress on because <laughs> i wouldn't wear I thought that. it was a beautiful dress but when your budget is like 10 bucks and you're going to the dollar store barbie it was so yeah <laughs> so what was john coffee about well, essentially, it's a song that wrote for Kristen, uh, a love song, if you want to call it that. Mm. And uh, we moved into a house on Barrington Street on the, the north north end of Barrington. This is six years ago or so now. And we, we moved in and we had this beautiful view of the water. And within a week of moving there, the Irving shipyard started to build up in front of us and <laughs> blo- blocked our view of the water. <laughs> And then uh, all these kind of little things started to happen and just, it's just life in general. But uh, we had, uh, well, I found out we had some uh, some rodents within our house. Uh, I told Kristen that there was only mice, but it was actually rats. So <laughs> I'd, we'd go yeah. to bed and then I'd uh, pretend I'd get up to go to the bathroom and I'd be emptying the rat traps. <laughs> <laughs> and the one night that Mike was away, probably on tour somewhere, I'm sitting, you know, in the living room and I hear pots and pans. The kitchen cover jiggling, like a mouse is not moving around a friggin' crock pot right now. So his secret was out. Yeah. yeah. I, I was busted. But uh, we, so the song is essentially about these things are going to happen in life. You're going to, your beautiful view of the ocean is going to get blocked. You're mm. going to have rats. Your back's going to get sore. Oil's going to be expensive. Mm. But at the end of the day, we have each other. And mm. that's ultimately all that matters. Right. So the song is a song I wrote for Chris and in that time period. And I'm, I'm referencing a lot of these things that actually happened. Mm-hmm. 
but I was just trying to uh, articulate that, yeah, no matter what happens, I'm, I'm here for you and we got each other and that, that's all that matters. Mm. And um, Kristen Walls, I mean, so he told her about the song, wrote it. Do you, do you hear the song before you paint or do you start, did you start painting right away? Yeah, Actually, I... is this a paint? Because I don't know what, this is like a science experiment, these things you do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to some extent, I have control over what lands on the canvas. I can choose my palette. I know sort of what reacts with each other. So there's a, there's a little bit of that guiding it. But mm. I, I tend to paint in the same way I listen to music. And that at the first few listens, I'm li li going for the melody more than I am the lyrics. And mm. I, of course, was familiar with the song. So that was a little bit easier for me. But I'm trying to capture more of the mood than, oh, you know, being as literal as, yeah, well, yeah, this yeah. is exactly what the lyric says. So gotcha, it has to gotcha, translate. Gotcha, gotcha. And with abstract, it's kind of, you know, you've got a bit of freedom there. And I can just tell you that's what it is. And, okay. and so be it. But uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Before I go to Kip Bernas, which I absolutely love, uh, let's rewind a bit. How did you two meet? We actually met... Uh, eight or nine years ago now at uh, an art fundraiser that I was hosting. So I was raising money for the Nova Scotia Gambia Association. I was studying international development at the time and pretty immersed in, in uh, my studies then and wanted to sort of reach out and, and promote some of these local organizations. And the owners uh, agreed that the funds raised would go towards uh, programming for women and girls for arts in the Gambia. So that seemed like a good fit. Mm. Um, and for this art show, I wanted to have live music just to make uh, it a bit more interesting. Yeah. And I had booked a band and two or three nights before the show, they wrote and basically said, like, I got a better gig. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> really wasn't that surprising. Like, yeah, it probably was. Like, probably wasn't paying anything but yeah you, uh, didn't, you weren't paying anything but a friend was like oh you should reach out to uh, the town heroes are really nice guys and and this and that and so i i hadn't met mike or, or bruce's bandmate at the time or even heard their music to be fair <laughs> and uh you know two days in advance like yeah i'll write whoever. whatever like, yeah, me, yeah you yeah, know yeah, some yeah, guy yeah, yeah. And uh, anyways, they showed up, did a great job, and uh, he gave me a CD, and I gave him a painting, and oh. that was sort of our f our first meeting. And at the time, Mike didn't have a cell phone. <laughs> he lived in the dark ages for <laughs> quite a few years. So our communication was either typing, uh, or I was texting his friends being like, Oh so my god! <laughs> how romantic is that, right? Like, you give the phone to Mike. Trying to flirt through somebody else's cell phone was not cool. So, however, it, it cre created this really... Uh, solid foundation where we had just been typing to each other for a few months before our first real date mm. uh so it was kind of a good opportunity you know to say something that you you meant or didn't mean because you had a chance to really think about it yeah it yeah, wasn't like yeah, going yeah. for dinner and just stumbling over words and <laughs> making an ass of yourself so we we knew a lot about each other before we actually met just from communicating online and yeah. creeping our uh, each other's facebook profiles yeah, so as that's... one does <laughs> <laughs> but we got we got married five years to the day after we met mm. so february 16th was the day we played the uh, Kristen's art fundraiser and five years after that in february 16th we got married in jamaica we eloped on the beach and did you have friends there? No, yeah. no. We told oh, we, we told our parents, off. told our parents and our close friends, and we we just went and we uh, just walked across the beach till we found a spot we we <laughs> liked and <laughs> read her. But we didn't have it wasn't an official gotcha, gotcha, marriage. Gotcha. It was what they call a uh, symbolic, I guess. So we we read our vows. We exchanged rings. Uh, we. We didn't have a photographer, but we wanted to really, obviously, capture the moment and to some degree. So there was a, a drug dealer standing in the water, as, <laughs> as they do on the beaches in Jamaica sometimes, on the resorts. <laughs> so he said, hey, bud, can you get a shot of us? So he came over out of the water. Like, and yeah, he's uh, he, our official photographer. He snapped a few shots yeah. of us. And we walked over to a all you can eat breakfast and uh, celebrated <laughs> with a buffet of as much bacon we could plow into oh our my faces. Oh, bacon, right? Yeah. yeah, best wedding day, right? <laughs> 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 and um, so, how was 
It's in there now. How long ago was this? The marriage? Yeah, it was three or four. <laughs> three or four years ago oh okay yeah, okay I'm trying to do the ma- so eight five three yeah, yeah. yeah something yeah. three, three <laughs> and a half I guess yeah whatever however long February would have been yeah, yeah that would have yeah. been third yeah, yeah wow exactly. and I mean and then when so you had the band yeah Town Heroes yeah um, how long have you been playing together Town Heroes have been uh, just coming up on ten years now, so we're a, a decade old, and we've we played for a very long time as two members. And when when we played Kristen's fundraiser where we met, that was myself and Bruce Gillis, who uh, who I still play with music with in the Town Heroes, and we've expanded into a four member group since then. But also in that time period, that's when I also started doing the solo stuff as well. Mm. So that's under my my own name, Michael S. Ryan, and that's what this project's all about. So, and um, so did you? Why did you start writing your songs like for the solo project? I I'm kind of always writing. Oh, okay. Like so, I I have a backlog of songs of ideas. Ah. I kind of last night's kind of funny. I we were sitting out in our sun porch and I was playing guitar and Kristen was just hanging out and uh, I started to play a song that I, I it was just coming on the spot, just an idea, mm. and I finished it and Kristen just really liked it. She thought it was awesome and I'm like, well, yeah, that was that's the Genesis of a song. That's the very first uh, time it's come to, to life, come to mind, come to oh. sound like anything. And and I kind of explain my how the how the, the the process comes to me. So then I recorded like uh, two minutes of me just playing the same thing and repeat just to capture the idea. And that then I have a backlog of all these ideas. And when it comes time to actually finish a song i listen to the ones find the ones i like the most mm. and work on those so wow it's part of the challenge of being artists we found is that it's hard to keep up with your ideas which i guess is a good problem to have mm. but you're also feeling a bit of that frustration and that i wish i had more time i guess we all want more time to do the things we enjoy but mm. there is a little bit of a battle there well the- especially how long does it take to make the, a painting what's the average time for a painting yeah i'd say uh mixing my paints takes a long time it's a couple of hours for me to get my paints prepared just because of the style i'm using so you're not just squeezing it out of a tube and using a brush yeah. it's it's kind of a science experiment i said yeah. i said <laughs> so i have to be mindful of you know my levels of ingredients and how long they're sitting for you actually have to let the paint settle so there's no bubbles and that sort of thing which of course took lots of experimenting to figure out but to answer your question maybe four or five hours from start to finish and And then you you have to go straight right i do yeah there's no uh, (laughs) no abandoning your project halfway (laughs) so i've tried that before you know something's come up and you leave and come back and it's like it's done i lost all of that work so i've learned yeah i've learned the hard way um so why how long ago did you start painting and what, did you start with this style or is it something you discovered uh as yeah. your painting went on i i've been painting i guess maybe 10 years we'll say give or take i i always knew i was creative or had that sense about me just hadn't quite found my voice or my style if you will mm. and actually uh so the house we live in now um mike and i both have our studios in there we we've been there about three and a half years and when we bought the house the former owner was she was an artist herself so the oh, house came with an art studio nice <laughs> luckily uh, it might be harder to sell when that time comes, but for us, it was perfect. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I finally had this space where I could play around. I wasn't just getting everything out, putting it on my kitchen table and putting it away every night when mm. we had to use it again. So I think having a bit of that space and consistency helped me finally figure out what I wanted to do. And I remember distinctly the evening I, I found this style. We were watching, <laughs> I don't know, The Martian. It was, uh, yeah, The Martian, Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah. Just oh, talking, man, that's like, a great feel. Just hanging out, in the, you know, in our new house and shooting the shit and watching this movie. And I was playing around with some paints and it looked nothing like this. <laughs> but I, I did, I finally had this moment of, whoa, this feels really good. Like this mm. feels like what is inside of me is finally coming yeah, out on yeah, canvas. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. just kind of 
was a moment. Um, how long? Um, so how long ago was this? Yeah, like three or four years ago now. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And then do you uh, still have the very first one you did? I do. <laughs> What does it look I like? Do. Is that is that like do you just notice this growth in? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is not one I brought with me for. <laughs> But I have it. It's a little token. Oh yeah. 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 Um. Um. Then okay. So. You said mixing the paint is what takes the most time when it comes to this. Do you kind of see the image in your head before you start the painting itself, or sometimes? Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Th so this is sort of my evolution, if you will. That I'm. Tr I'm starting to experiment with a more realistic image of something. Oh. So this is quite abstract. The p pieces I brought here today, but uh, the second song Cape Breton Night that uh, as part of our project that Mike wrote the painting for that is a little bit uh, more realistic it's a landscape of Cape Breton so it's still the same fluid style still abstract but you can see a bit more shape and mm. and landscape to it and people really liked it and it was a new challenge for me so Oh, yeah, explore what's there. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean the song is great, like I, I keep you. saying. And the image too is great. But so at what point, you know, you had your studio, you're doing your music thing and then you're doing the art thing. At what point do you guys think, you know what? <laughs> Maybe yeah. we should do it together. Yeah. <laughs> I think when we decided, it was kind of like, what? <laughs> How have we not thought about this before? Yeah, yeah. But for me, especially, I, I needed time to develop. I, I Mike has been a musician for a lot longer than I've been an artist, or, you know, at least in the literal sense of practicing that mm. and being immersed in the cultural industries, we'll say. So he, you know, I needed time to catch up and feel confident in, in my style and my mm. skills before I think it made sense to collaborate. That's just how I felt, but. Yeah, we we knew at some point we were going to collaborate and we're collaborating all the time on everything we do. Like mm. our, our life is a collaboration together. So again, Chris Nasser's studio, I have my studio where we're always creating, we're always going into the other person's space to see what they've come up with to be inspired and maybe not even intentionally be inspired but that's what happens where we're inspiring and influencing each other as we're viewing what we've each created so it it just it was really natural we didn't didn't have to like sit down and like convince each other or Like have a big. Like we do other people. <laughs> yeah. It was just like I, I'm writing these songs. She's doing her paintings, and we just wanted to collaborate on it in in some capacity and mm. see what we could do. So, and with this now, each month is we're treating it as a learning experience where we know that the song and the painting are going going to exist. But what else can we do to? promote that to get the art out there to get the music out there and how can we grow from month to month so it's a it's a learning process for both of us and for on the music side of things i'm recording uh, writing everything recording everything and mixing it myself so it's a it's a big process and a mm. lot of work and most of the stuff that i've released with the town heroes i didn't mix myself so that's uh It's a it's a big learning process for myself, and mm. I just want to continually improve and each month come up with something that's better than the last month and just have a continual growth happening. But for us, us when we decide to collaborate, I think the day we met <laughs> really in a in a roundabout way, just mm. once we started to 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 create what we have together, it's um, we we both been inspiring each other. That's whole length of time and it's kind of been a, a growth in a, a really good growth and it just seemed like this made perfect sense so it just kind of happened I guess that's great yeah I think I think we often talk about how your creative self is really just a collection of your whole life up until the day that you create that piece mm. so a lot of you know a lot of artists talk about or are asked about their process and you know I think Cape Breton Night maybe is a good example of of course I was using something specific to create that painting but 
as an artist, your <clears throat> style is really just a manifestation of every moment that you've had until mm. then. So the project, I think, kind of represents that as well, which is why, you know, from the bottoms of our murky hearts, which is this painting here, and will be the album cover. <gasps> it's, oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's done, but we don't. Uh, we haven't released that yeah, yet. Yeah. That'll so, come down so the this road, is, but... is, there's going to be a song called that, or I don't know. there's not a song called that, but it's referenced in multiple songs. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, how did you even come up with that title? Well, I think this project and a lot of the songs I create and what what Kristen makes is just from. Well, deep, deep inside us, it's every emotion is trying to be portrayed here. And the first song we wrote or that I wrote for the project for John Coffey is essentially a love song. But there's there's a song on here about Kristen's grandmother dying. Like these are strong emotions. It's not just uh, one. We're not just trying to portray that everything is great all the time. This is mm. about the deepest emotions from deep inside your heart here. The bottoms off your murky hearts. Wow. And that's, <laughs> why did you choose red? Uh, well, guess, that's red, right? Yeah. There, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny if it wasn't oh, red. I could have <laughs> <laughs> made it good. You know, something about color blindness or primary colors. Yeah. But, no, it is in fact red. Okay. Good, good catch. Okay. Uh, I don't know. There was something kind of striking about this palette. It's a little bit different and darker and, and deeper than what I usually go for. But mm. it felt like to encompass a whole album, it needed some of that rich, bold uh, pop of color and intensity. So uh, this this start will be the foundation of that album cover. And Mike's cousin, Julia, she's a graphic designer, has done some... Uh, manipulation and overlay there and it looks pretty great so, oh you yeah. kind of know what the cover will look like yeah, yeah the, yeah, the yeah, cover's done, done actually yeah, yeah. cool cool I, I don't know, like glass shards or yeah this this is uh th that's exactly what it is glass shards in both of these pieces um so do you cut yourself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like my cutter no. <laughs> 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 okay, you cut me on that one. But <laughs> I had to make up the palette. But, but yeah, yeah, like, uh, I mean, because what can we glass? You know, I guess I'm super clumsy. So if I break something and, you know, I don't hurt myself, but if I'm cleaning it, I might end up hurting myself. So just seeing that, I'm, I'm thinking, first off, you have to break it and you actually kind of have to plan where each piece goes you do yeah so this is something i'm experimenting with now i've used uh like taken wildflowers and pressed them and dried them and put those in paintings before just kind of seeing what will look good what will stay so that's another element of the science experiment where you're really timing okay when do these pieces need to be placed so that they'll adhere uh, no injuries to report, Nothing, other than maybe stepping on them, and oh, no. <laughs> that kind of stuff. But no blood, not no okay. wood. So no, we're good. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. This is just red paint. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, uh, so how long did you take to make that one? Uh, you know, I don't recall. Maybe probably three or four hours. I'm God ballparking damn. here, but uh, man. Yeah. Um, and so now the cover is done. Uh, how many? I know it's a year, so you have 10 more songs to go? 10 more to go, yeah. Oh, man. And again, we, we don't have like, okay, on this date, we're going to release the album right now. We're mm. we're not sure if we want to do every song and then the album's out, or we want to, okay, after eight songs, we're going to figure out it's time to release the album, and there's going to be like four ones that have never been released that people hear. So it's, it's kind of uh. just figuring out how we... How how we want to do it and trying to learn as we go along, yeah. and I think even just from since we started, we've we've been learning a lot. Like there's a lot of work that goes into it, and sometimes we wanted to do more than was maybe realistic. Yeah. So uh, we're just trying to again just keep keep it consistent and keep the content as much content as we can we can possibly put out each month. We want to, but. Some months there's going to be more and some less just because we are doing other things. I'm, I'm busy playing a lot of shows right now in different times. Kristen's busy with various things, so it's it's hard to... Full-time job. <laughs> yeah. It's hard <laughs> Wait, to... Wait, there's a, there's a... 
Oh, shoot. How do you make time for this one, then? I, I just... My weekends are my uh, production it. time. Wow. I don't know. It's kind of a nice balance. My My day job, if you will, is, you know corporate office nine to five yeah, which sounds a bit yeah. soul-sucking and can be at times yeah. but you look forward in a way to the contrast of that so it, it makes the creative process just about the creative process mm. you're not relying on it to pay your mortgage and buy your groceries so mm. it takes a bit of the pressure off from okay you better do something really good and right sell it now today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it, it makes that time just about that and more fun and a bit of an escape so you don't mm. really mind it doesn't feel like okay i'm working all weekend because uh, i'm painting oh uh, okay yeah wow yeah. wow um and then so how do you guys balance um, every other thing you do with your lives and this project? The last couple of weeks, I think, has been a real <laughs> testament to yeah. that question. Because you had two shows. I had two back-to-back shows, one at our at our house for the weekend and another opening at uh, Gallery 1919 in the North End of yeah. Halifax on that Tuesday. Mike had a big show at the Shore Club with his band just this past Friday, and I think we got home about four in the morning. And oh, wow. Yeah, so there, we've been really busy as individuals, mm. um, which, yeah, has really meant being on the ball for our collaboration. And we have these check-ins of, okay, where are we in our timeline and production with, with mm. the collaboration? Uh, we, we try to, every month ahead, create a calendar with, okay, this date, this is going to happen, this date, the prints are available. And mm -hmm. and the, the focus is really on social media with this project because that's how we're getting everything out. We're not buying ad space and newspapers or anything. Everything people is... Like, oh, people some, do that. Some yeah, people I, do. I, I, yeah, people do you do that? No, no, no. no. Uh, but Tow I truck people, companies. <laughs> <laughs> people still do that. You'd be shocked. Uh, what's the name? Uh, what's the thing? Chronicle, right? Chronicle Herald. Herald yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't even know the name of the <laughs> But really, they, yeah, they, yeah, that's a silly thing. And here's the thing. Um, we're in Nova Scotia, so... Um, we have elderly people here that still always read the paper, right? Yeah, yeah. And you you don't want to like say, oh, I'm just focusing on the kids and their Instagram. Yeah. Uh, well, those people have a lot of purchasing power, right? Yeah. So those guys that want that demographic will go yeah, there. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. The right. good thing is that that demographic is starting to use social media now. like uh, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, Facebook. Everyone's yeah. mom in Facebook. the world is commenting on every post we create <laughs> snapchat and some of the newer social media yeah no, I don't, I so won't, I, we're in this weird in between yeah world of snapchat i don't get it I don't same <laughs> I don't, don't know how to use it i'm sure i don't get it i don't think it's cool uh, like i i i don't get it like okay so <laughs> i make a picture and then it disappears i don't I, I mean, you've just explained it. it to me. So I, yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Sounds like a magic trick, which is great. But, yeah. yeah, no, I think personally, of all the social uh, media, um, whatever that exists out there, personally, um, I love Instagram the most because mm -hmm. I love, I'm visual. I get to see stuff and then it is forgiving in how long you want your caption. I'm like, you, man, God damn it. You, you are great at Instagram. Your captions are always great. Like, oh, look at my painting. But then read this thing. I, and I like that. So I think mentally it makes sense that this project is happening because the painting has a story behind it. And mm -hmm. you've been telling this story in your captions, but now you're telling it with the music that Mike makes. So oh, come on board. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, in Instagram is a visual social media platform, so that certainly make makes sense for an artist to use in that way. But we're always talking about marketing and advertising and the limitations of that and what are people looking at. I think everybody who has a, any kind of small business or creative uh, product is feeling that a little bit. And I don't know anything about algorithms. I hear that there's issues with that every so often, but you, you just kind of do your thing. Honestly, and, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Here's what I, I know. Like, I mean, you can game the system, whatever, but uh, if you just stay true to the thing you do and you really believe in, the yeah. people that that thing is meant for will come to it. Yeah. I, I, totally like like yeah. I love Cape Breton, and let's actually let's talk about the video for Cape Breton nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what was what was that? But it was raining. It was raining. Well, <laughs> so for the, the music video, although the song itself is 
Cape Breton is is my home. I'm from a small town called Inverness, and the, the the west coast of Cape Breton, where the sun sets in the water and everything is beautiful every day. Uh, but that's beautiful little island that everyone from Cape Breton loves so dearly is very much lacking in opportunities for for work and to survive there. So a lot of people move away to work. There's a large portion of the island that works in Alberta, Fort McMurray, Calgary, all those areas. Mm. Myself, I live in Halifax and just so many people have moved away to work, but there's a, a really strong sense of home there and people try to go back whenever they can and people don't get to go there as often as they want, but they go for a very short period of time and try to take in everything that they missed over the last, whatever, 51 weeks or however long they've been away. And they try to take it all in in a really condensed time period. And that the song Cape Breton Night is essentially about that. It's written kind of from the perspective of someone who works in uh, the oil fields in Fort McMurray and he gets to come home. He's with person, someone they care about, and they're just experiencing everything that they've longed for for that <clears throat> period of time they were away. So... For the music video, the plan was we wanted to capture one of these beautiful sunsets on the ocean where the sky lights up with all these majestic colors and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. <laughs> but we had one day to do it, so you're just hoping for the weather. And we didn't get good weather, so we went down to the beach and uh, to, to shoot this. Yeah. And I think it actually is better this way. It's like... The song is, it's a pretty song, but it's also about that it's not necessarily a happy song. It's not a sad song either, mm. but it's, it's strong, strong emotions are being portrayed in there and yeah. just a beautiful sun setting might not necessarily capture that the exact mm. way that I want it. And I think as, this, and the, the, it started to rain where the song essentially builds up so i think that kind of captures the the essence of that yeah. and really the the emotion of someone who is is really trying to live in the moment and i think the the way the video progresses from it's it's not too bad out but <laughs> then, <laughs> then it's pouring rain on me and, yeah you're playing uh, the thing i'm thinking <laughs> was there any point in your mind was like oh yeah let's pack it up call it a day uh the, After you did the shoot, the and only it thing, wasn't recording. Yeah, the, only <laughs> thing I was, the only thing I was worried about was my camera. Like, I didn't care about my guitar or me. Oh, or, okay. And we, so my cousin, I had two of my cousins come to help shoot it. And uh, one was sitting in the sand just getting soaked. And the other was holding a plastic oh, co-op boy. bag. <laughs> the, gro- the grocery store in uh, in my hometown is a co-op. So okay. we, we don't have Sobeys bags there. We have co-op bags. So he was holding a plastic bag over the camera just trying so, to get the, yeah, yeah, the rain yeah. off it. And uh, the funny thing is after the the biggest downpour and what I thought was the best take and I just, I just gave it my all. I was just as passionate as I possibly could be. And I finished, I'm like, oh, that's it. We might even be able... That, the whole music video might just be that one take. Like, just play that, and that's a video. Then my cousin was feeling like, ah, oh, shit, I didn't have it turned on. What so- the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> It was raining and windy, and, like, it wasn't, like, ideal conditions. So I had to... I'm like, start it right now. All right, let's go. Do it again. So, so that happened. He did a great job, though. Oh, I didn't pay him well. anything. I just... <laughs> <laughs> So, um, work has started on the next song. The next song is is done. Yeah, like to get songs on well, Spotify, Apple Music, you have to have them yeah, in advance. Yeah, so, so yeah, the song's gonna yeah. come out on the twenty, whatever the last Friday is of the of the, this month. Mm-hmm. So, I I had it already submitted to oh, okay. to get on those those uh, streaming services yeah, and okay. everywhere. 
And the paintings. I'm just gonna hang my head. (laughs) (laughs) Painting isn't done yet. We talked about that this morning, actually, because there is a bit of a system going forward where I have to have the painting done so I can photograph it to make stuff. So I had a bit of a moment of, oh, we're almost the end of July. I guess I better pull my weight and. uh, But so I'll I'll aim to uh, get that done this week. Is the plan? Oh man! But the song, the song, this song, I find really great as a summer song but we also had a lot of friends come and sing on it in a bit of a gang vocal or a chorus section yeah. there's Mike's four, mom's on yeah, it yeah my and mom and aunt there's I think 40 people or so sing uh, the song's called Keep On Keeping On oh, wait have you shot a video for it yet? no no, no. Uh, well I have some footage that I'm going to use for the video but, but gotcha. we uh, are trying to figure out how to make it make it mesh together oh, okay <laughs> the footage is of a caterpillar running around but uh, we'll, we'll make it work uh but yeah the the song's done some of the video shot uh and yeah we had 40 people sing on the song and Smokes. it's a song about persevering and mm. in this case the song is about i'm a musician it's about persevering in the, the music industry in the music world and Sometimes you just got to put your head down and keep going kind of thing. But I think it can be real. Anyone can relate to that and no matter what they're doing. And mm. I, I really wanted to, to have a lot of people sing in the chorus, that sense of unity and the sense of being together and just supporting each other. And that's what the song is, is about ultimately. And just getting people come into my studio to sing on it and just got to catch up with lots of people meet new people and mm. i reached out online just said hey anyone want to sing on this just <laughs> send me the tracks if you got uh, the ability to record so oh, a bunch of okay. people just sent me tracks some some of these people are big award-winning musicians and some people never even sang before so it's oh, a, wow. <laughs> a mixture for sure wow wow you want to okay. be on it uh, I, I can't sing <laughs> i can't sing you know it's funny because everyone in my family well like my mom and my sister, they are great singers. And I think maybe I can sing, but I just, nope, nope, yeah. nope. Shy. It's like, my thing is, I want to be at least good enough that I can do in public. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference between singing in the shower and singing like on the record. <laughs> and I'm like, I ah, agree with you. I'm ah. terrified. <laughs> if you can talk, oh. you can sing. <laughs> you know, you've been doing forever. So it's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to end it with this because I want you to play something. Yeah. Sweet. So, for for both of you with this one, um, do you find that actually no, um, that that's is that's I was gonna say do Am you I find that now? no 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 <laughs> I was gonna say do you find that being together helps? Of course it helps. So that's not what I'm gonna ask. But um, with the murky uh, bottoms of our murky hearts from the bottom of our murky hearts with this with this project, right? Um, what are some of the things you've learned working? I know it's still well, months ahead, but so far, what are some of the lessons you've learned? Working together on this? What, f- what's what been really fun creatively has actually been the extra stuff. So working on the music video. So as hard as the the John Coffey music video was, it was really refreshing to do something else that was creative but mm. completely outside of our comfort zone. So there was no pressure or expectation on how it was going to look. And we had nothing to compare it to. Yeah. It looks fucking so great. So we just kind of had fun with it. <laughs> and that that has been... I hope that we get to do more of that. Yeah. Um, which we will because we enjoyed it, I guess. Yeah, but. just collaborating. Like the true collaboration is happening on those aspects of it. Like obviously when Kristen's painting, like she's listening to the song and being influenced by it. But when we're working on a video together, that's us both literally moving parts together just doing everything together so that is where the true collaboration in this comes in Mm -hmm. and we want to figure out how to do more of that whether it's not just music videos but what can we do that the we're just involved completely together and Mm -hmm. but it comes off as us doing the project so we're that's that's kind of the challenge right now is to figure out Mm -hmm. what we can do to capture that a little bit about what our album release will look like so we hope to have mike will be live performing and i'll be live painting when the time comes but this time a painting 
What's that? Is this it? this style, this style of, of painting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So we're just kind of talking about what does that look like? What will the audience see? How will they best see it? We're talking about having maybe a GoPro over yep. the painting and projected just so. Oh, man, that's so cool. Yeah. So yeah. that, that I think, is. Uh, really you're going to send an invite, right? Yeah, of you'll course. Get an invite. Yeah. yeah, you bet. So our ultimate goal is we're going to do this release whenever it comes up uh, where I'm performing and Kristen's painting. And then we want to be able to take that and tour that like we have a show where it's synchronized where i'm playing my songs Kristen's creating going along with the rhythm of the song at different times the way she's putting things on the canvas and this is a full whatever 90 minute show or however long it is and that's what we want to take out there whether it's playing house concerts or theaters but massey hall no. <laughs> yeah well we'll, we'll hope wow. for that okay um thank you so much for coming and i'm gonna let michael do his thing yeah good yeah thank you so much it's been a pleasure it's john coffee Like more male, but maybe less human being. Killed some living things this week. I don't know what it means. We used to stare at the water heel at the block, and now I feel that concrete wall needs a wrecking ball and a demolition crew. Too many bills, oil ain't cheap, and my back's getting sore. I feel like I'm an old man getting near about it. Try to be a good man that'll never let you down Even when the world's got our backs against the ground I wish I had some superpowers like Big John Coffee Take away the pain I saw in every country Suck away the bad that you ever saw her Don't ever be afraid I wouldn't let them my girl I hope you know that I'm there for you no matter what they put us through I hope you know that I won't back down no matter if I'm bleeding on the ground song that could hold you if I die Tell you all the things I used to say when I was alive Maybe I could build a boat and sail with you, see Flow free in the water while I whisper pleasant cheese I'll fire myself from a rich man but I'll give you a can I ain't got much for money but I'll give you all I am Anytime it's getting hard, I'll be there at your side. A thousand different armies couldn't stop me if they tried. I hope you know that I'm there for you. This is the Blackout Podcast.
listening.